Hello, I'm Paul Larson. The legacy of a world-famous cellist will benefit young cello players studying in the Adirondack Mountains of New York. That's where Grigor Piatigorsky took refuge during World War II. The dramatic life of the Russian-born cellist inspired historian Margaret Bartley of Elizabethtown, New York, to write a book about his early years. In this author visit feature, Bartley shows us how the book is taking her on a musical adventure of her own. Music student Margaret Bartley says the cello has changed her life, but she never would have picked it up without inspiration from the most famous cello player to live in the Adirondacks. Gregor Piatigorsky, a man she credits with bringing classical music to the area. Gregor Piatigorsky was a Russian-American cellist uh, as well known in the 1920s to the 1950s as Yo-Yo Ma is today. In fact, world-class musicians such as Yo-Yo Ma have played in the Adirondacks thanks to Piatigorsky's influence in the creation of a school for talented string players. Gregor Piatigorsky was born in Russia in 1903. At the age of 15, he became the principal cellist at the celebrated Bolshoi Theater Orchestra in Moscow. He fled his home country after the Russian Revolution and became the principal cellist for the Berlin Philharmonic in Germany in 1925. Because he was Jewish and he escaped from Russia, he was not allowed citizenship in any other European country. Uh, when the Nazis came to power in 1930s, he was forbidden to play with the Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra, so he had to leave Germany. His daughter said he was always on the run. Piatigorsky toured the world with his instrument. Before Gregor Piatigorsky, the cello was just an orchestra instrument. It was not a solo instrument. Not only did he make it a solo instrument, but he took it to places where no one had ever heard a cello before. He took it to like Asia and South America. So he is referred to as the popularizer of the cello and let people really know of it as a unique solo instrument, which is why Yo-Yo Ma is so well known today as a solo artist. Gregor Piatigorsky married Jacqueline Rothschild, daughter of the Baron de Rothschild, whom he met in Paris. They were from the richest family in Europe. When he toured the United States in the late 1930s, he was a man without a country. But the sight of the Adirondacks in Elizabethtown, New York, gave him a comforting feeling. He'd arrived for a weekend visit after playing Carnegie Hall. As he drove through the Boquet Valley, he noticed the green forests, the evergreens, and the white birches. And he said it reminded him so much of the way things looked in Russia and he just immediately was struck. The white birches mean a lot to Russians. They're a very spiritual element. So he felt immediately at home here. Piatigorsky asked a real estate agent to find him a house. He showed the cellist an abandoned summer home called Windy Cliff. Bartley describes his first view of the property in the biography she wrote, Grisha, which is a nickname for Gregor. Gregor looked up. Above him, a massive fortress like that of an English castle rose from the mountainside. Stone buttresses supported a half-timbered balcony that wrapped around the structure. Heavy arches led to a tunnel beneath the parapet wall, and a riot of new ferns and evergreens surrounded the base. It is, Gregor stared up at the structure, it is very big. Too big, he thought, and he only wanted to spend $5,000. And a few weeks later, he got a telegram saying that the $5,000 had been accepted to cover the back taxes, and he owned Windy Cliff for $5,000. It included 125 acres of land. World War II forced him to stop touring the world and settle into his new house, his first home since leaving Russia. Bartley's husband grew up in a house across from Windy Cliff in Elizabethtown and played with Piatigorsky's children. He told his wife about the cellist. She found the man's life so fascinating, she decided to write the biography and received help from Piatigorsky's wife and grown-up children. Gregor Piatigorsky is responsible for bringing 
uh, world-class music, classical music to the Adirondacks because he supported and sponsored so many classical musicians who had escaped from Europe during the war, and this became their refuge. He also brought many of his students who had escaped here. Um, so they all f created a musical community here in this part of the Adirondacks. They gave concerts from here, uh, some of them bought homes here, and um, even today there are many pr um, prominent musicians today who had their early years here in Elizabethtown studying with him. He became the first cello teacher at the Meadowmount School. Bartley says prominent musicians in the making often supervise her cello playing. Their students at Meadowmount School of Music in nearby Westport, a prestigious conservatory that owes its existence in part to Piatigorsky. School for string and piano students accepts only a small number of players who demonstrate an extraordinary ability. The school was founded by a friend of Piatigorsky's. Ivan Glamian is a well-known violin teacher from Russia. Uh, he was teaching at Juilliard in the 1930s and Piatigorsky invited him up as a guest to Windy Cliff. And Ivan said, uh, I'd love to have a school uh, up here away from all the distractions of the city, New York City. And Piatigorsky said, this is where you should build your school. And Ivan Glamian bought the Meadowmount Farm, which is just outside of Elizabethtown. And the school has been there for 60 years. Although Piatigorsky taught for less than six years at Meadowmount, he helped the school gain distinction. Mr. Piatigorsky's presence here at Meadowmount helped to establish the school as a world-class institution. Bartley says her playing benefits whenever she can practice with world-class students. She decided to learn the cello as research for her book on Piatigorsky whose influence will continue to help cellists in the Adirondacks. A percentage of Bartley's profits from the book go to the Gregor Piatigorsky Scholarship at Meadowmount, an endowment she created in honor of the great cellist. His contribution was not recognized in the Adirondacks, and I wanted there to be a legacy here with his name on it. Piatigorsky left for California in the 1950s to form a trio with Arthur Rubinstein and Yasha Heifetz. The cellist died in 1976 from lung cancer. He was 73. But the scholarship and Bartley's book will ensure his music won't be forgotten in the Adirondack Mountains. He left his legacy here in the Adirondacks. Meadowmount School of Music has existed for 60 years. The impact of Meadowmount on the musical history of America is profound. We have some of the greatest stars of the musical world, Yo-Yo Ma, uh, Itzhak Perlman have attended there, Pincus Zuckerman, and they still come back, some of them come back and visit here. I feel like I've had a wonderful adventure, that music has taken me on a road that I would never have known I could follow. Um, it has given me an introduction to musicians which I would never have been able to know. Um, and I'm still on that path, it's not over yet. Um, I'm sharing his story with the world. Author Visits is a production of Mountain Lake PBS. For more information about the authors and their books, head to our website, mountainlake.org.